is Dr. Andrew Dauber. I'm the Chief of Endocrinology at Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. My area of interest and expertise is in uh, short stature and in particular in rare genetic growth disorders. Um, so I've been doing a number of research studies over the years. My work has focused on initially kind of figuring out genetic causes of short stature and identifying new uh, genes that are involved in underlying idiopathic short stature and other uh, syndromes that lead to short stature. And more recently, I've been doing clinical trials of different precision medicine approaches for children with specific genetic forms of short stature. Today, we're going to speak mostly about the current results of a trial that I'm doing of a medication called Vesoratide, uh, which is a C-type natriuretic peptide analog in children with selected genetic causes of short stature. The trial that I'm using and involved in is for a condition called hypochondroplasia. The medicine Vesoratide has already been approved by the FDA for use in achondroplasia. So achondroplasia is the most co common form of uh, dwarfism, of disproportionate short stature. It's due to an activating genetic variant in a gene called FGFR3, or fibroblast growth factor receptor 3. It leads to very significant short stature uh, with body disproportion, with shortened limbs compared to one's trunk, relatively enlarged head size, and it can have some significant medical comorbidities associated with it. So medical complications like spinal stenosis or in infancy, there can be narrowing of the frame and magnum, which can lead to sleep apnea and even sudden death in infants with achondroplasia. My studies, though, are more focused on hypochondroplasia as well as some other genetic conditions. So hypochondroplasia, some refer to as a milder form of achondroplasia. It's also due to genetic variants in that same gene, FGFR3 but uh, different genetic variants that lead to less of the activation. So FGFR3 acts as a break to growth. It slows down the cells in the growth plate from you know, making bones longer. And uh, in hypochondroplasia, again, this is a milder break, but still leads to very significant uh, short stature with body disproportion. But rarely are there the other significant uh, medical comorbidities that you can see in achondroplasia, although they can occur. So for hypochondroplasia, there are no currently approved medical therapies anywhere in the world, okay? So sometimes people will try growth hormone for individuals with hypochondroplasia. Either they know the diagnosis or often these kids are not diagnosed. They haven't undergone genetic testing and somebody might try treating them with growth hormone, treating them as if they have idiopathic short stature, which just means we don't have a specific cause. And the results are pretty um, unimpressive, I would say, with growth hormone. There are no really good long-term studies, but most of the consensus is that it might help in the short term a little bit improve growth rate, but there's no really convincing evidence that long-term it has a major effect on height. So for most children with hypochondroplasia, there are no available therapies, and we're trying to change that. So the study I'm doing is a study that we launched at Children's National. It's what's called an investigator-initiated study. Uh, the study is funded and supported by BioMarin, who makes Vesoratide. Again, that's a C-type natriuretic peptide analog, but it's an independent study that we run out of Children's National. And the study is looking at using Vesoratide in uh, a number of different genetic conditions. The conditions of the children involved include hypochondroplasia. So we have 24 children who have been treated at least a year with um, Vesoratide with hypochondroplasia. And then we are also including children with genetic changes in a gene called Agrican, a gene called NPR2, which is the receptor for Vesoratide for CNP. And lastly, in a group of conditions called resopathies, the most common of which is Noonan syndrome. So that's the breakdown of the children who are in our study. And the way the study works is that they have to have a known genetic variant causing that condition. They have to have short stature with a height below minus 2.25 standard deviations, so well you know, below the average growth chart. And then we enroll them, and there's a six-month period where we just observe them without any treatment so that we can get a baseline look at their growth rate. And then after that, they get started on the treatment. 
So the treatment's given as a daily subcutaneous injection. We're using the same dose that's been used in achondroplasia, and the children are treated for a year. Uh, and then we compare how they're growing on treatment versus prior to treatment, and those who seem to be responding are eligible to continue in an extension study for multiple years. So we had two presentations, one looking at the patients with hypochondroplasia and one looking at the other genetic categories. So to start with, um, for hypochondroplasia, and this we've uh, recently published, um, the patients had, on average, an increase in their growth rate with treatment of around 1.8 centimeters per year, which translates to over a two standard deviation increase in growth velocity standard deviation. So really a significant improvement in their growth rates compared to their baseline. So uh, that translated to around a 0.3 standard deviation height increase over the course of one year of treatment. There was variability between individuals. Some people have better responses, some a little bit poorer, but in general, that's the, a magnitude of response that's similar to what has been seen in achondroplasia, maybe a little bit better. And the medicine was pretty well tolerated. So injection site reactions were very common. Um, but there were no otherwise no serious safety events. Nobody needed to discontinue treatment due to an adverse event. Everybody uh, who started on medication has completed the uh, 12 months of the trial. Um, so those results are encouraging. And actually, as a result of our trial, Biomarin has now announced and has already launched a phase three trial of the sorotide in children with hypochondroplasia. And we're one of the lead sites for that trial. And that trial is ongoing. So the second presentation, though, was focused on those other rare genetic conditions, the Agrican gene mutations, the NPR2 gene mutations, and then uh, the resopathies. Um, and what I showed was preliminary data for that study as patients are still uh, enrolled and actively in the midst of treatment for that study. And our preliminary data actually shows, on average, an over three centimeter a year increase in their growth rates and around a 0.6 standard deviation increase in their height standard deviation score. So almost double what we're seeing in hypochondroplasia. Those genetic conditions all have defects which are much more directly related to where CNP acts, to where vasorotide is acting. So this is really a precision medicine approach for those disorders. And the last thing I showed was uh, in today's presentation, I showed just slides of two patients who are our really our best responders and have been on the medication for two years or longer. Uh, one of them has a mutation in the Agrican gene and one in the NPR2 gene. And both of these kids started out below the average stature growth curve and are now around the 25th percentile for their height. They haven't started puberty, they're still growing. So really showing like a really remarkable result uh, with the medication um, with longer term treatment. Really excited to see how that goes as we continue to follow them for the years to come. For the other, the non-hypochondroplasia genetic conditions, in around a year from now, we should have the full results of the trial and look forward to reporting those and, you know, with all of the patients who are involved. So we're definitely, you know, waiting and following the patients to see what's going on there. And then, of course, we'll continue long-term treatment. And then, as I mentioned, for hypochondroplasia, we're actively enrolling, we and other sites, in a uh, Biomarin-sponsored phase three trial. And there are now other uh, drugs uh, that are also starting to target hypochondroplasia and open trials for other options as well. So we're really starting to see this therapeutic landscape open up and develop for patients with this rare condition for which... You know, right now there's no approved therapy. So really exciting times uh, in this space. I think it's just great to get the word out there so that, you know, if doctors haven't heard of that there are these available open clinical trials, they know for patients with hypochondroplasia, you know, they should be looking out. People can contact me or look on clinicaltrials.gov for the open clinical trials. Uh, you know, the only way we're going to get to approved therapies is by uh, doing these studies. So, uh, you know, really thank you also to all of the patients who participate. It's not easy having a child in clinical trial, um, but it's really helping us move the field forward.